Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is the difference between built-in and Azure Managed Connectors in Logic Apps Standard. Let's go. Okay, so why this content? Um, generally get a lot of questions about the differences between built-in and Azure Connectors. Wanted to describe in this video like what are the benefits, the drawbacks of each of the approach. Talk a little bit about the differences in pricing models between the two styles of connectors. And then we'll talk about some other areas like do these connectors have feature parity? And if there is a version of both, which one should I choose? So let's go ahead, let's dive deeper into this and see where it goes. All right, so let's go ahead, let's compare and contrast our built-in versus our Azure connectors. So let's start with built-in. If in the case of built-in, we have a single tenant based architecture. And what this means is that your connectors will run within the service host. Now, to be clear, these are specifically the built-in connectors. Just because you use standard and then you use an Azure doesn't mean that it's gonna run inside of that workflow service host. So when we select a built-in connector, we have standard, it will run within that service host. Now, generally, what does that mean? It, it generally means better performance for you because you have some dedicated compute. Uh, naturally, when we talk about Azure, we're gonna talk about multi-tenancy. And for those reasons, we generally have to put in some sort of limits, protection limits, to avoid noisy neighbors and uh, that type of thing. Now, if we think about the types of built-in connectors, at least for now, um, and this is a growing list of, or of, of connectors, but in general, we're talking about protocol adapters. So these could be your SFTP, your FTP, your file, um, MQ, as an example. And so you think of these as generally being high throughput in nature. And so as a result, you do want the built-in because you want those capabilities, those enterprise capabilities that allow you to support high volume scenario. Another common uh, sort of characteristic is some of the Azure services as well. So you'll see like Cosmos DB and Azure Service Bus. These typically tend to be high volume services as well, which make it a good fit for the built in architecture as well. Now, when you do go ahead and use built in connectors or built in actions and triggers, these are not metered per action like they are on the Azure side of things. Once again, because you have a workflow service plan, you're already paying for some dedicated compute. And what we're doing is we're allowing you to use these connectors inside that compute itself. And so for those reasons, you're not going to see these metered per action. And then lastly, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in an upcoming slide, when you're using these built-in connectors, you can connect to a VNet seamlessly. You know, assuming you've connected your Logic App standard instance to a VNet, you will be able to seamlessly go ahead and communicate with resources that are connected to that same VNet. So this makes, once you've got it set up, makes it really easy for people to connect to either on-premises systems that have VNet peering with Azure or just resources in Azure that are connected to a VNet. So that's built in and some of the sort of characteristics of those connectors. Let's now flip over to Azure or what's also sometimes referred to as managed connectors. And so these are the same connectors that are found in consumption. And you know, so what you'll find is that that library is pretty much the same. I'm not aware if there's anything, anything that is different from that perspective. And so when you are using them in this context, even from standard, they're going to operate in the same way. And so that's where you start to get into metered per action. You're going to get into situations where you might be throttled uh, based upon the service that you're connecting to. They may have rate limiting that's imposed to protect their APIs from being called too many times. Uh, you could also have the platform level throttling as well. And one thing I would call out for now anyways that is a benefit of the Azure connectors is that you may find more authentication options available today. And, and I would look at this as kind of a point in time thing, but for example, you might find that managed identities are supported in, in more of the con Azure connectors than the built-in. Uh, this is more of just, you know, as we have more opportunity to add support in the built-in, we'll go ahead and do so 
um, but obviously the Azure connectors have been around for much longer and so as a result you may find that there's more authentication options for you as well. Uh, lastly on this side is if we need to access on-prem resources uh, generally you're going to uh, basically access those through the on-premises data gateway um, because you're not going to have that direct VNet support in order to use those connectors so you need to have that bridge and that becomes the on-prem data gateway. When we talk about built-in we've got the VNet uh, the VNet uh, connectivity which allows us to traverse those networks. Now a common question here is like I've got Azure Logic Apps standard but I'm using one of these Azure connectors can I still connect through my VNet and the answer is, is no. Uh, you can still route traffic through the VNet originally but it's going to hit a public endpoint in Azure where these connectors are hosted and from there the communication is going to continue. So that's where you can't, as of this point, use VNet connectivity through those Azure connectors. You do need to use the on-prem data gateway if you need to traverse a local network itself. So this is just the experience when you are in, now I'm using the portal here, but it looks pretty similar when you're using VS Code. And you go in and you want to, say, use an action. So here we're talking actions, not triggers. Triggers work very similarly but if you go and click on the built-in tab you're going to see all of the connectors that are available to you and as I mentioned before we've got like our protocol adapters like SFTP, HTTP, FTP, we've got file in here as well, um, IBM host file so like or sorry we don't have file um, not yet but uh, so we do have uh, you know these typical technically these protocol or we've got Azure so we've got things like you know Azure Functions, Cosmos DB, Azure Blob, etc. And so these would all be examples of, of built-in. Then if we click on the Azure tab, then this is going to give you that list of 700 plus connectors that are available to you. And when you go ahead and choose one of these, you're going to use it in that mode. Now you will see duplicates in the sense that we may have Azure Cosmos DB over here and we may have Azure Cosmos DB over here and so do note that when you select one of them that will inherit the behavior of the group that you got it from so if you use Cosmos DB from Azure you're then going to be metered um, for that usage uh, versus if you go ahead and select the built-in you're not going to get metered because it's going to be part of your standard subscription itself so where possible you do use built-in not only for the sort of cost perspective but also the performance perspective but fully aware that there isn't parity just yet in terms of all of the operations being available and also all of the authentication models so for for now you will have to sort of compare and contrast a little bit as we continue to build up that capability inside of the built-in uh, side of things uh, so here's just a diagram of VNet. So here I've got a Logic App standard instance. I've gone ahead and configured networking to use VNet integration. I've got a whole video on this. I will link in the description if you're interested. And when you go ahead and enable VNet integration, there is a toggle here that allows you to route all traffic through the VNet itself. And so by enabling this, that's going to push all of your traffic through this specific VNet. Now, if you have local resources that are connected to that VNet, you're going to be able to access them. And then otherwise, all of their traffic will be routed through this path. And from there, um, you know, if you need to access external resources, it will traverse through that network segment itself. And as I mentioned before, this won't change the behavior of the Azure connectors. Um, even when you do have VNet connectivity enabled. So pricing model, I'm not going to go too far into the weeds here, but just to give you sort of a representative sample. So on the left hand side, we've got our standard. This is all in the Azure pricing calculator. Um, and then we've got the equivalent in consumption. So here we can go ahead and choose standard. Uh, we've got few three different service plans that you can use. I'm using sort of the cheapest uh, WS1. And what you can see here is there is essentially an hourly charge for that. Works out to roughly 180 bucks USD per month. 
And so this is what allows you to go ahead and run those built-in actions and triggers for no, addi no additional charge. It's because you're already paying for some compute here. Now, if we talk about our connectors, this is where we get into those Azure connectors where they are metered. And you're gonna see here that the execution is the same price, uh, whether you're in consumption or whether you're in standard itself. So if you do use them, you're gonna be paying per execution and those will get sort of modeled accordingly. Uh, the other thing just to be aware of, so here, consumption, there is no sort of like compute plan that you're paying for. Uh, you're going to get you know 4,000 actions for free um, and you can sort of model how many actions you anticipate using. Those would include built-in actions, so like things like compose or variables, things of that nature. And um, versus those would be considered built in on this side. Uh, and then we also have data retention here. So you're gonna pay a monthly charge for your data retention. Now, technically within standard, there is data charges associated with it as well. Uh, when you provision a Logic App standard instance, we're gonna ask you for a storage account. Obviously that storage account um, carries costs with it too. So while it's not sort of in this particular view, uh, something to be aware of as well. So you do have to be mindful of your storage and you'll pay for that accordingly as well. Um, now a common question, and it's completely fair, is when will Connector X be available in Logic App Standard as a built-in? And uh, so as we're building out this support, uh, what we've done here is there is a uh, GitHub page, and I'll put a link in the description of the video, where Divya, who's a PM for the connectors, uh, continues to update. And this is just to give customers some visibility into when we anticipate these connectors to be available. Uh, it's not a guarantee, but this is kind of our, our best estimate on when these connectors will be available and just trying to provide folks with some transparency in terms of uh, what we're working on and when we're hoping to have it complete as well. So go ahead and check out that page regularly. If there's connectors missing from that list that you'd like to see, go ahead and just add it in the comments. That's the best way to get the attention of the PM team itself. So that concludes this video. Hopefully that answers some of the questions that you may have about built-in connectors versus Azure connectors. Thanks for checking out this video and uh, we'll see you again soon on the channel. Take care.